and welcome back to another episode of Project Supercar. Now, if you're new to my channel, I've built my own supercar out of an old Audi estate. Now, it's not quite finished yet, it's about 90% done, uh, and the last 10% is possibly the most uh, difficult and expensive, but we'll get into that in another episode. But on this episode, we're going to be covering the braking system, which is something we really do need to get right. So, if we're going to talk about the braking system, I think it's going to be a good idea if we take one of the wheels off. So I'll just get jacked up and we'll pull this wheel off. Here is a BMW E46 front brake caliper and disc. Now, if you've been following along, then you already know this because I've fitted BMW front hub carriers onto this car. And if you've been following along, you'll know why I did this. And if you don't, then go back to the beginning of this playlist and there'll be an episode in there somewhere that'll explain why. So anyway, these are BMW E46 front brakes. I think they're from a um, 330. I think the 325 and the 330 have the same calipers here. Unless you're in another country. Um, I've noticed some weird goings on with um, America. because. You don't get the M3 over there, or the old version anyway, like the E30, let me see, the E36 M3, I don't think you lot got it in America, so you get different brakes or something. Um, anyway, it depends on your country and it depends on what calipers you have. Now in the UK, this is what we get on the 330 and 325i, and that's quite ample for this uh, 2.8 V6. So this is the front brake setup. Oh, and by the way, any of you eagle-eyed people looking at this and say, oh, your tires were rubbing. Well, yes, they were, but that was on the prototype and I hadn't set up the steering and I hadn't fitted the steering stops. That's all done now and the tires no longer rub. So let's take a look at the back brakes. <laughs> back brakes. These are Audi A6 rear discs and calipers and they came from the original donor car which is um, an Audi estate. It was actually um, an Audi 100 and it was just on the model change so when the Audi 100 changed to the Audi A6. Anyway, so what you see here is a PCD converter. And again, if you've been following along, then you'll know why I did this. But we've got BMW on the front, we've got Audi on the back, and the PCDs are different. So I'm not going to go into the details, but I had to do this because it solved a whole load of engineering issues. Again, if you go back to the playlist, there'll be an episode in there explaining why. So, let's take a closer look at this brake, shall we? Now before anyone says and goes, wow, look at the size of that wheel space, so you're going to pull out your wheel bearings and all this sort of stuff. Remember, this is the prototype, okay? This is temporarily being used. So we have a PCD converter here and a wheel spacer here. The rear wheels on this car are supposed to be dished. I'm just fitting BMW standard wheels on this, so this makes up the difference. Um, when the turbo chassis is made, this won't be part of the design and we'll probably have to have machined 
custom hubs but we'll go into that when the time comes that's another episode so yeah don't get too frightened with this this is temporary and it's just to solve a few basic engineering issues now one thing I want you to notice is this down here this is the ABS sensor okay I've not actually removed it because it's seized in there and I didn't want to damage it and rip it out and all this sort of stuff and I thought it might have something to do with the ECU this sort of stuff so I left it in there as part of the prototype now I think it's a good idea if we talk about ABS so I think the average Joe out there understands the concept of ABS it stops your wheels from locking up under hard braking but there are some, um, some more subtle areas within ABS that you've got to think about and consider if you're building your own DIY supercar. And we'll go into that in a sec, but let's just watch this video and cover the basics. In an automobile, all four wheels should be rolling at all times to avoid the vehicle slipping. In fact, this simple rolling principle is the reason why your car turns when you turn the front wheels. In perfect rolling conditions, the value of the frictional coefficient is nearly zero. However, when the wheel is 100% slipping, sliding friction comes into play. But since rubber is a complex material, which has strange behaviors during braking, the frictional coefficient between the tire and the road varies as shown with respect to slippage. It has a peak value at around 12% of slip ratio, and below and above this, the frictional coefficient reduces. An anti-lock braking system is very simple. What ABS does is to prevent the wheels from completely locking up. The ABS system includes speed sensors attached to all of the wheels. When the sensors detect that a wheel is about to lock up, a modulator unit partially releases the brake pad on that wheel. This way, the wheels will be allowed to spin intermittently during braking. You can immediately see the effect of this intermittent wheel rotation on steering. Here, the wheels will have a rotational velocity component. This will definitely allow the steering to function and driver will be able to steer the vehicle even during the braking. So if we take a look behind the BMW disc, we'll see a tooth wheel inside the hub. As I turn the disc, you'll see that the tooth wheel also goes round. This activates a sensor that is usually fitted here. As the wheel rotates, it activates the sensor, sending a signal to the ABS control unit, which then activates the ABS mechanism. I think we should take a look inside one of these ABS pumps and see why sometimes they fail. All right, so we'll do some code reading. Yep, we've got a code AO45, left front inlet valve circuit. And by looking at the crud in that master yeah. cylinder, it's probably made its way down into that ABS unit. Now, we just can't go put the new one in without taking the old one apart and seeing how it works. Right on. Hopefully, we're going to see some nasty stuff when we pop this top right here. Yes, yeah, so this is the valve body side. Got it? All right, and then underneath, so these are the solenoids. These are going to control the valves and where the fluids able to go what's a uh, oh yeah so you can see the transfer here we've already got a lot of really nasty yeah. looking look at all that stuff that's in the fluid oh look at all that we'll push all this contaminant debris moisture and so forth back up into the lines and back up into this guy and as you can tell it is covered absolutely clogged up right here now yeah. we've got a new setup here from ac delco so again we got the motor we got the valve body we got our little gasket that sits right here and once we mount these two together, we'll transfer a couple of bolts over, it's ready to go back in the car and get bled. Oh, well, I would show you the teeth on the Audi ABS, but it's deep inside here. Can't see it. Hmm. But this works under the same principles as the BMW ABS. This rotates round, or it would if it wasn't in gear, but anyway, this turns around, sends a signal through the ABS sensor, through this cable here, hopefully you can see that, yeah, okay. 
That's gets sent to the ECU, controls the pump and stops the wheels from locking up. The ECU controls solenoids within the ABS pump mechanism to stop your wheels from locking up. Now what's ABS all about? Well, you got a wheel speed sensor and a wheel speed sensor does nothing more than spins around, creates these lines of flux and picks up a magnetic field and produces an AC signal. And when it produces that AC signal, the computer reads it as a speed. And you can see here, the red light indicates high speeds. The green line would be a lower speed. And then what does it do? Well, it goes through some hold, increase, decrease pressure, the module does. So I have an ABS unit right here. It's a cool demonstrator. And I can fire it up and what's going on? Well, the wheels are spinning. And the computer's simply looking for one to go out of sync with the other ones. Once it does that, that wheel speed sensor picks it up. You saw the frequency change. The computer then, bam, actually and starts taking control of it. But wheel speed sensors come in all shapes and forms. You got one right here that's a built-in bearing sensor. It's all built into it. You have to replace the whole thing. This one right here, this is an actual differential. And you can see it creates a magnetic field and it picks it up as the whole differential spins around. It's gonna pick it up right there. And then the last one I have right here, this is actually on a rotor assembly. It's a tooth ring. It goes around and it picks it up there. But this is an integral part of the system. It has to see the wheel speed or it can't function. This is a Delphi 6. Now this is the one you see on a lot of cars with it all built in. It looks like it's one unit, but it's really non-integral. What does that mean? Well, you can separate the motor pack. And once you separate the motor pack, with some transfer tubes going through, you can actually separate the master cylinder assembly. Now, once you separate that, I want to show you what I showed you earlier on the actual screen. Inside an ABS unit, there's some pistons. And through a series of hold, increase, decrease pressure, 15 times per second, I mind you, it's going to run this piston up and down. As it runs that piston up and down, it creates a little void for fluid to go in. It lets that brake get under control, gets it with the other wheels, and everybody's fine. So as it's running up and down, that's how an ABS unit works. Now, our unit, Brian had it off the car, sitting right here. It said it had an actual electronic brain problem. So we had to go to Rock Auto and order us a new brain. They usually stock the unit itself. We got that and some wheel speed sensors because we didn't know what we were up against. But with this, pretty simple repair. It actually comes in this static bag here so you don't get electrocuted and you don't electrocute it really. Not that you don't get electrocuted, but you don't want static electricity to hit that. Now I got three screws out of it. I'm gonna take the last screw out. There's nothing to it. Once you do that, you can go ahead and separate this. Now remember earlier on the screen, you saw the whole unit, bam, there it is. A bunch of pressure transducers and some different electronics inside of there. That's actually gonna read and tell us what's going on. This is the brain of the system. Now, before you handle this, you either wanna get a static band or just touch the frame of the door. Go ahead and take a discharge off yourself so when you come over here, you don't cause any static electricity. I'm gonna pull that out, really nothing to it. It's just a matter of clicking it on here. Let's get it on there the right way. Click it back on there. You can hear it seat, no problem. Come back, we'll put our bolts on. We'll torque these down to specifications because this is critical once again because we got a pressure transducer reading all the pressures inside of there. So we'll torque that down to specifications. Now all we have to do is get this back over to Brian so he can reinstall it. We'll be on our way with an Impala. We won't have an ABS lighter, no worries. So are we all caught up on how ABS works? Great. Now we can go into the details of why it's so difficult to make ABS work on your DIY supercar. Now, we have BMW hubs here and Audi ones there. We know this. The problem is, is that the toothed wheel on this one has, I believe, 48 teeth. But, now on this hub, it has 45 teeth. So we have 48 teeth on the BMW and 45 teeth on the Audi. So can we all start to see a bit of a problem? And there's another problem. Now, if you all remember the episode regarding Ackerman steering, as you turn a corner, the outside wheel travels faster than the inside wheel. And I've changed the track and wheelbase of this car from the original donor car, which means that when I turn this round corners, the outside wheel is going to spin or rotate quicker than it should on the original Audi donor car. This also means that the ECU is going to start getting confused. It's going to see speeds of wheels 
that do not fit the programming of the ECU and that's going to cause confusion. Is that, does that make sense to you? Doesn't to me. <laughs> And then there's another problem. In uh, most cars, they have two sorts of ABS sensor, one called passive, one called active. The passive puts out a sine wave. The active puts out a square wave. Now, I don't know what system the ABS is on the BMW or the Audi, that sort of thing, but if these are passive or active, they're never gonna be compatible. Apart from the fact, one's 48 teeth and one's 45. So we're beginning to see a pattern here. Hello, it's me from the future. And yes, I've made this episode too long again. Now maybe you're running out of tea break, or perhaps your missus has just got out of the shoe shop and she wants a handbag back. But I think I'll make this a two-parter. So tune in next time and find out if I fitted ABS to my DIY supercar. Bye for now.